freedom. It's a huge word today in the United States, and I would say throughout the world. We want to be free. We want to be free to do what we want, free to make our lives work the way that we want it to work, and freedom is important. Now, I want to say to you also that um, some people maybe don't want to be free. They don't want to take responsibility for their life. They just want to do whatever. But freedom still is a very important word, but God has something to say to us about freedom. I'm Pastor Tom, and this is Cindy, who uh, we are going to get into this discussion from John chapter 8, verses 31 through, um, man, I wrote it down wrote my, wrong in my notes. I think it's 36. 36 yep. um, so the idea being is that what does Jesus have to say? That, uh, and I'm going to just throw out the first words of the text here today in verse 31 from John chapter 8. He says, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, you know, staying, I'm hearing, Cindy, yeah. I don't want, it's staying with God. That's what he's saying. If you stay with me, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. And what is he saying stay with? Just looking at nature and believing God's out there? No, not necessarily. Well, not. <laughs> to get to know the freedom that we have will come in the word. And the word will not be out there written in the sky, but it'll be written by what Jesus says. That's right. Uh, so, you know, what, how would you add to that, Cindy? Well, I think there are a lot of words in the sentence that mean something. Abide is what you, what you said. It's live with, walk with. Um, be in conversation with, listen, you know, so with, with what? Well, he says, my word. Well, that's his words in the Bible, but it's not only that because Jesus is the word. And for me, if I look to Jesus, um, I'm in the right place. Um, that's that's abiding, that's, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, you got to do something. There has to be a relationship. Yeah, well, and I think that, that, that the relationship begins with what Jesus has to say, okay? That Jesus is saying that, uh, listen to me. Now, we could say, well, we believe in God, and we say, well, what have you heard from God lately? Why, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? People say, yeah. Well, okay, what's he saying to you? Well, I don't know. It's kind of like mm -hmm. out of my own head. I just think of these things. Uh, what does it mean that you will know the truth and the truth will uh. set you free? You know, have you dealt with those issues? I, and again, I want to go back to freedom. I, this is a huge word for us. Uh, and the idea being is that we all want it. But where does our freedom come from today? Mm -hmm. And I would say one of the things, you know, I missed last week. I feel bad about that one, but... That's another issue um, with Solomon. But freedom oftentimes can come with the accumulation of wealth. If I have enough wealth, I can do what I want. And I will be free. And I don't have to be putting up with this stuff anymore that I put up with in my life. Or how many people are in relationships and have got to the place in their relationship who say, I really want to be free from this spouse. <laughs> yeah. I've had it with them. They just go on and on. It's a big pain in the rear to listen to them or what they say, or what they do. Uh, we want to be free from burdens in life. Well, I think that, I, I'm gonna take a step back again, and that is that, you know, if, if you abide in Jesus, the word, then I will know the truth, and the truth will set me free. So it's the truth that's gonna set me free. Well, Jesus is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and so, if I am just, I, I'm trying to think of better words, you know, abiding, walking with, living, you know, if, if, if I'm talking to Jesus, if I'm aware of him throughout the day, because he's here, he's always here, I'm just not paying attention. And when I pay attention, I have the truth. And that's what's going to set me free. Right. And, 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 and my argument basically has been this way. And I call it mine, but I'm going to say I believe this is in Scripture. If you want certainty, you don't always get as much here. Because I say, hey, if you're, you know, want to challenge me, challenge me. If you look at Jesus through the Gospels, he's trying to tell people that you cannot, by your own power, get mm -hmm. these things in your life. 
The truth of, the, of life is, is that we're all stuck. Yep. You will know the truth, that our life is stuck. There is something in us that moves us away from the two directions of life, which God says is one, your relationship with me and your relationship with other people. Those two are linked together. Number one being our relationship with God, which will take care of our relationships with others. But we're stuck. We can't do that. And that's the truth. Yeah. The problem with us as humans is that we believe, no, I can fix it. Yes, we do. I'm going to, look, I'm going to try to be a better person than I was the day before. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. You might be able to pull that off. But what you're going to find, if to get to the truth, is you're always going to fall short. You're always going to be accused. Yeah, and I don't do a good job of it either. Well, that's because the it's, point. it's hard. It's hard, and we can't <laughs> do it. Yeah. Nobody has broke the two-minute mile marker mm -hmm. uh, running yet, yeah. and I, maybe they will one day. But the thing is, the law will always accuse us, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And so there we can be very frustrated about staying in the Word. Well, it's interesting because we're talking about freedom and how free am I. Well, we all think we are free, I think. And what I see myself doing is I can get up in the morning and feel like, oh, I didn't sleep well. And oh, I got to worry about this thing. And oh, I'm anxious. And I can decide that my day is going to be, you know, kind of a bummer. You know, that I'm just going to make, I'm going to feel sorry for myself today. And I'm free to do that. I can make those kinds of decisions. But it's a real lousy freedom because I'm actually, I actually feel enslaved by my emotions, you know, enslaved by, oh, what my brain is doing. Whereas when I say, wait a minute, stop, look at the Lord, look up, these things, they actually fall away because he provides whatever it is I need. He knows what I need. I don't even know. And there it's the handing over to God that sets us free. Yes. You know, like in the U.S. right now, <laughs> there's so much anxiety of the elections. You know, but to yes. say that uh, whichever side, both sides have anxiety about it. Yes. But just to hand it over to God, you have that. Well, where is this freedom? How does this freedom happen? Now, I'm, I'm arguing the case that Jesus is saying we cannot, by our own reason or strength or by our own power, get our life together. We're always going to be messed up. Freedom comes in the grace that God has given us, that God has loved us, that he has forgiven us, that it's not just, whoa, I'm nice, that's, Jesus loves me and forgives me. Well, yeah, okay, that is nice, but this puts you into a relationship with God, that God is with you. And, you know, throughout the New Testament, you see it too. Do not fear, do not fear, mm -hmm. do not yeah, fear. Yeah, that's right. And so freedom from fear, you know. And but, he is so big and so powerful that he can do this in our lives. You know, it's not that, oh, we're doing something good. It's that if we allow him, if we look to him, he can make things right. I mean, he can actually do that. Well, yeah, he can in our, and I, my view that I've seen through the years is that mostly what we are concerned with in this life is what's out there. Mm -hmm. And that we want a God who's going to fix what's out there. True. Fix the election. Yeah. And fix my fix my family. Fix my finances. Fix my car. Yeah. You know, yeah. whatever it may be. Believing that it's that it's out there. But when we believe, like one man said one time, when we believe the problems out there, that's the problem. <laughs> what Jesus is pointing at in this text is saying that the problem is within us. And that's what he's come to fix yeah. through what he's given with his grace. And there, there you find out, and, and I just let's say this, yes. you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, what I just said, you might go, well, okay, nice, Jesus loves me. But I'm saying to you, stay with it. You know, if you look at the text here, you, we see, uh, if, you, if you remain in my word, Abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. It means that you hold on to the word and you continue to let it work in your life. You know, this week in the Protestant world, we're going to have uh, Reformation Sunday. Well, Martin Luther got into the word. He was teaching the word. <laughs> and he was a slave because yeah. he did not get the grace of God. Once we get the grace of God, whose blood set us free to be people of God, it changes life. 
Well, you know, we go through life wanting to fix everything out there. We really, really do. And we can't because we're not God. I mean, we can't fix right. our political parties. We can't fix our laws. Um, we can't fix our kids. We can't fix, you know, other people's relationships or Certainly. addictions. Yeah, there's a lot of things yeah. in life we can't fix. I mean, we had trouble with the microphone before we started. You yeah. said it's too tight on there, and I got on there and cranked it. Well, we fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I mean, there, there are some things we can fix, and I know that people who, who have addictions, who get serious about life, they learn in the prayer, uh, help me to mm -hmm. change the things but I, I can. But I can't fix them. No. I can't fix But you look else. at what can yeah. you fix and what yes. you cannot fix. And what Jesus basically is saying is that you can't even fix yourself. Right. I've come into the world will, to do though. that. He yeah. will. Yeah. Then there is where you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. When we understand how important the grace of God is, their life is fixed. And I wonder if there are people who have really gotten it so that they're, you know, almost 100% of the time in that place where they're letting God fix them. Because I know I'm not one of those people. <laughs> well, right. Uh, the, the, the issue of life is that, uh, it, according to God and what he's done in Jesus, I've fixed it all. Now I want to give you a life to living up to, learning to do mm -hmm. what you said, let yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, and learning to let go of the things that, uh, and having the freedom yeah. to do that. But we are all in need in this life, and we try to go after getting our needs met. And, you know, one of the classics we brought up is um, <coughs> believing that my life could be fixed by the accumulation of wealth. Mm -hmm. I think there's another the biggest one, and people will say that's the biggest idol in life is wealth. I, I think it's sometimes it's relationships. Yeah, uh, family. Family. Mm -hmm. Good relationships yeah. will fix my life. So I yell and scream or I manipulate or try to control other people, believing if I get to change their behaviors, it'll make my life better. Well, the people part is a little bit closer to the truth because we were put here to love God and love people. Well, yes, it is, it is closer, <laughs> but how do we go about that? You know, do we love people when we're trying to manipulate no. them for ourselves? No. We love them when we're concerned with yeah. who they are as people and wanting the best for them. And sometimes that does mean, you know, hey, knock it off, you know, that's inappropriate. Um, but we replace God with other things. Oh, yeah. We replace God with relationships. We replace God with money. You know, we're just talking about Hawaii, mm -hmm. you know. Cindy's been to the beach in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to the beach. Yes. I mean, I've been to some nicer beaches. Yeah. Well, some beaches around the world and, you know, believe that, oh, all I need to do is travel for the rest of my life and uh -huh. I'll be happy because I like travel. Uh -huh. Or I know the, how warm the water is. We're on the California coast. It's cold, it's cold out here. there. Yes. Yeah, but you go to Hawaii, <laughs> get down a little south, the Pacific, and you feel that it's pretty darn good, you know? Yeah. And, uh, well, oh, there's the answer of life. I and I can get one of those big houses on the beach. I heard there's one going for like 130 million in La Jolla down by San Diego. <laughs> there's this big old mansion that took 15 years to build. But I'm sure there's some beauties in Hawaii where the water's nicer. I, I don't think it would be fun to live in a great big mansion. Okay, well what would work for you, Cindy? <laughs> Did you like it when you bought your Subaru? <laughs> yeah, I like smaller. Uh, you know. Okay, well, let's get you smaller, <laughs> you know. I mean, one thing that will work for one person will work for another person, yeah. and that we can be different in our taste, but the point being is that those things, according to Jesus, are not the solutions of life. And sometimes we choose things that we are really enslaved to because they take a lot of our energy, a lot of our time, a lot of our um, attention, you right. know, to take care of them. Right. I mean, what is workaholism? Yeah. You know, I mean, for pastors, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, they're addicted to their churches. Yeah. They just all got to be at church all the time, yeah. all the time, all the time. We got to go, go, go. We can't stop working. And then I say, well, I'm not a workaholic. Then I think, well, when you go on vacation, what do you think about a lot? <laughs> you know, and I'm asking myself that question. But what the, the, the issue of life is, is wh where, what is going to work for us? There's a certain, you're, we're in this life, we're in need. 
we try to get those needs met, Jesus comes along and says, you will stay in my word. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yes, yes he does. And learning to let go in life, learning to say, you know, it's not going to work there. And it's not to say that, look, if you could get into Hawaii and get one of those places on the beach or this place in La Jolla down mm -hmm. south for mm -hmm. $130 million, mm -hmm. the most expensive house in the United States, mm -hmm. maybe, you might, you, you can be happy there with God. You, well, you could. I couldn't. I think you could. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> Cindy, you say, this house is too big, but my faith has overcome the size of this house, so I can be happy living in this big house. As a matter I, of fact, I'm going to use this big house to yeah. maybe bring people in, and I, you know, God can, the, the, yes. the, the, our life is not fixed by that which is out there. Right. It's fixed by what... Christ wants to do in here. And God has put me in places that I didn't think I wanted to be in, and they were the right place. So, you know, it's not that I know what's best for me. Yes, it's not that, you know, we know what's best for us, but God, see, this is the deal. The God, the things that are out there mm -hmm. are not necessarily the issues of life. No, no. I mean, they, they can be. I mean, if you were in Palestine right now and the, the Israelis were constantly attacking you, or if you lived in, in Israel today and you felt threatened constantly by more of Hamas coming over to uh, get some boundary yeah. sins on you and your family, well, yeah, okay, you have those things. But at the same time, I'm going to go back and just argue against what I said. Yeah. You can find a peace in life, mm -hmm. despite the fact you live in threatening. Yes. You know, you could find peace in living in cold North Dakota. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say anybody, if you're living out in North Dakota, and you mm -hmm. don't be insulted mm -hmm. by that. But it's cold. We know it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. I cold. could live in the cold, by the way. You could? Mm -hmm. you're, That's you're, why you're the beach gonna... doesn't do that much for me. Oh, it doesn't. You like <laughs> uh, you know, i got a son-in-law like that. He, yeah. He's all into the yeah. cold, you know. But, uh, yeah. But, but yes, it, it, it can work in difference. And so what we do is we find out what works and we chase that. But what God is saying, no, look, come to me, mm -hmm. listen to me, remain in my word. And I'm going to, I'm going to reveal the truth of your life. Well, I think that then we feel very free. We really have freedom because it's not up to us to figure out how to fix everything around us, everything in our life. It's, it's, I want to plug in the trusting God part because it's if I can trust God with everything, then I just walk the way he wants me to walk. Right. And you used that big mean. word, if. Yeah. And because if gets into if. conditional, we're not always too crazy about the word if and conditional because yeah. what Jesus has come to do is say, you know, if it comes down to you, ain't going to work too well. But I want you to know something. I've got you covered with my grace. Yes. I he, want you to live yes. this life the way that, and I want you to have that freedom. If you end up on the beach, if you end up in that expensive yeah. house you don't think you're going to like, well, I won't buy it. But if you were, you could find happiness yeah. there. You can find it in the small places that your, your, your life will come together in my grace and mercy in Jesus Christ. Well, our salvation is totally a gift. It's totally grace. But Jesus says, if you abide in my word, then you'll be free. And we do have a choice whether we're going to abide in him or go our own way and just not pay any attention. Right. We'll still end up, you know, with him eternally. But we may not have the life he, ha he wants for us. He well, wants right. to give us. Uh, sure. And I, I think you can get it. Look, let me just, I'll throw it right on the table right now. Christ has died for us. We have his grace. We have his mercy. And who could say <laughs> on that? No, this is a very wonderful thing. But we can say no to allowing that to work in our life by saying, no, I'm going to worry. No, I do believe in Hawaii that my life will be come together if I could just move to a different location where the winters aren't there. And, I, and if you do that, and this is not a bad thing, this is a blessing in your life, but what is going to make life work? 
it's not going to be according to God those things. It's going to be his grace, his love, his mercy working in you, knowing the truth and living that freedom. Yeah. Just like yes. you said earlier, yes. you just told someone in your family, can you give that to God? Mm -hmm. There's some freedom. Yes. Can you give away your fears about the election? There's <laughs> some freedom. Yes. Can you be content with what you have in your bank account? There's some freedom. Yeah. Okay, so we can live the reality yeah. of what we've received in Jesus Christ, which is the good life. Love, peace, patience, joy, kindness. We can have relationships where we're about loving others and get a sense of fulfillment. Yeah. We can get a sense of fulfillment when it's no longer about, I got to get this, this need met. I got to fit this hole in my heart or whatever they call that um, by doing this, this, and this. Uh, that we could chase that, uh, but God has it for us here to fulfill us. Well, and it's interesting. I think God made, well, he, he designed us all, you know, and I think the way he made me is that if I have the list of the things I know I should do, it doesn't motivate me. I don't do it. You if don't. I look to him, I do it. I, well, that's how I work. You know, it's like, because I'm getting something. You know, I'm getting the truth. I'm getting the, um, what he has for me. Otherwise, I'm trying to just do it on my own. And right. It I, just, I, I can't, and I know I can't. I mean, there are things we can do in this life, you know, and some people will say making lists can be good. You know, that if you write something down, the more, the greater chance you get it done. But as Christians, we live out of our identity with Jesus The lists Christ. only work for me for like cleaning my house. <laughs> I need to make more lists on my day off because I forget to do things and I think my wife wants to see me active. But the, the, the issue of life is, is where do we get this freedom, okay? Now, I think one of the things that's underestimated in these last few minutes, but I want to bring it out, was Jesus says, look, if anybody sins, they're a slave to sin. Sin comes down to just two things. Love God with all your heart, soul, and all your mind. Love the people he puts in our life. We as humans say, just, oh, there it is. It's the rules. We're going to do the rules. That's going to make us a slave. That's going to frustrate us. The freedom, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, will be in Jesus Christ. Now, I say this to you. I'm reluctant to say it because you've got to deal with your life on your terms with God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, okay, let me tell you what the truth is, and then you're going <laughs> to... No, it, it's going to come by God himself working in yeah. your life. Yes. And that's what God wants to do. The problem that these folks had when they heard the slave talk and they said, what the heck are you talking about? We do what the heck we want, like a lot of people today believe. Mm -hmm. Nobody's running around saying, yeah, we're all slaves. When you say, well, why do you say that? Because we're, we're sinful. We don't love God and we don't love God. <laughs> They say, no, we, we could be slaves if the, if the election doesn't go the way uh, we want it to be or, or we could lose our rights and our freedom. Um, but Jesus says we're not free. He brings us freedom by knowing the truth. The truth is that we're all messed up and the freedom comes to what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. That's right. And then listen to Cindy. Cindy's saying, here's your benefits, you know. Learn to let go in your life of your stresses. Yeah. Learn to trust in God. Walk with God. When he says, don't be afraid, learn to say, okay, God, I'm afraid, but I'm going to learn to let go. And sometimes it's not the act of walking. It's just the looking. <laughs> I look to God, and he, he does it. Freedom to look to God. Yeah. Just look and what it, it, the freedom comes in what God has done for yes. us and not by us following these rules that mm -hmm. we got to do this. We got our list. Yeah. I'm going to love people. I'm going <laughs> to I, 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 put up with people more because I want to be a good person. No, no, no. The, the way to go with life is to trust God. Yes, we need. That's how I would do it. I would be trying to put up with people. I don't think that's what Jesus did. No. I think he loved them. No. Well, he, he did tell them at times, you know, I'm getting impatient with you guys. What's wrong with you? Why don't you get what I'm saying? Well, here? you love uh, your kids and you would say that to them. Sure. Another issue. Another for the curious. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we want to say to everybody, you know, thank you for being here uh, and hearing these things. And it really, this is not about Cindy and it's not about no. me. This is about the God who's come into the world who wants to love you and wants to be a part of your life 
and wants to show you the freedom, not of the way the world understands it, but the way that he gives it. And so we want to encourage you uh, on your life journey uh, to continue to abide in his word, continue to seek to understand. If you don't get what we're saying, maybe sometimes we don't get but <laughs> what we're saying, stay with it. Stay with it. Let God do this work in your life. So we want to say thank you for being here with us. Come back again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>